I'm, I'm pretty confident we will have multiple COVID-19 vaccines. Uh, we're developing one. It's a low-cost recombinant protein vaccine made in Pichia through microbial fermentation. And the advantage of that one is it's the same technology used to make the recombinant hepatitis B vaccine. And they make that locally in, in Brazil and in, uh, India and in Indonesia in, uh, and in multiple countries, Bangladesh. So uh, we're uh, doing some technology transfer to uh, India, and we hope to announce soon that we'll that we are accelerating a low-cost COVID-19 vaccine for India. So that's really exciting, and um, hopefully that that announcement will come in a week or so, uh, and uh, potentially we could start doing that with other low and middle-income countries as well. Because I'm really worried that the um, many developing countries won't have access to some of the RNA vaccines, DNA vaccines, uh, adenovirus vaccines that we've been hearing about through Operation Warp Speed. And I don't wanna wait for that to filter down. I want, the, you know, have, want them to have access now. So that's exciting. The other, regarding the Operation Warp Speed vaccines, I think you know, there's an awful lot of hype and one of the things I like to remind people on, if you actually look at the phase one data, uh, the vaccines, one of the things I always look for is good levels of virus neutralizing antibody and the ability to produce T cell responses. You want to see both. And we have three vaccines that if you give it in two doses, will seem to give pretty good levels of virus neutralizing antibody equivalent to convalescent patients, maybe more. But if you actually look at the data, there are only 10 patients, 10, 10, 10 volunteers who got two doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine. And they compared that, I think, with three or four convalescent serum patients. That's it. That's what we know. And the 10 patients who got two doses, they seem to get pretty good virus neutralizing antibody and T cell responses. In the 12 patients, we got two doses of the 50 microgram dose of the Pfizer vaccine. They also seem to show a glimmer of promise. In the 15 patients who got the two doses of the Moderna vaccine, it shows some promise. So all of this, this idea that we're going to vaccinate the whole nation based on 10, 12, and 15 normal human volunteers is a bit ridiculous, right? So this, this is why I'm, I'm trying to manage expectations and say, you know, we've got to have some reality testing in terms of what's really going to happen. And uh, from my perspective, all it means is that, yes, it's worth continuing the clinical testing program for the two doses of each of those vaccines. And the idea that you're going to have anything more than that is, to me, is a bit, uh, is, is really overstepping things at this point. So by, by more than that, do you mean that like projecting into the future or do you mean well, projecting that, you know, you know, Secretary Azar just said we're going to have vaccine available by the fall. Um, you know, so what? I mean, yeah, so you'll have it manufactured, uh, you know, but the idea that we're going to roll we're gonna go from 10 patients and 12 patients to rolling it out for 300 million people you know, there, there's, there's a disconnect there. And, uh, and so the messaging coming out of Operation Warp Speed is mostly it's non-existent. And when it does happen, it's horrible. Uh, so we've, we've got to fix that. Uh, I think, you know, there's been a lot of guidance documents put out there by CEPI, uh, by, um, and even papers coming out of the NIH that are just factually incorrect. Um, you know, in terms of the understanding of immune enhancement, and we're hoping our, to correct that in our uh, NIH vaccine working group. Uh, so that's been submitted, and hopefully that will come out soon. Factually incorrect, um, misunderstanding the mechanism of immune enhancement, claiming it's due to Th2 type immune responses when it's actually not the case, and claiming that alum can't be used when actually alum reduces immune enhancement, not exacerbates it. So there's a lot of dogma out there that is 
permeated the vaccine space. And it's really based not on a review of the study of the literature, it's based on these consensus documents where a few strong personalities get into the room, dominate the conversation and put out things that are actually incorrect. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to fix some of that. That's great, that's really interesting stuff. All right, thank you so much for joining us and really appreciate your time. Well, thanks. And uh, uh, thank you again for the opportunity and, and good luck with everything.